So this is a 16 gigabyte Lexar Compact Flash UDMA7 professional card, pretty standard stuff, uh, 1066X. Uh, this card comes in in a variety of different sizes, 16 ranging up to 256 gigs. So what we're looking at here is a device that has a SM2236 GAC controller and it has two uh, memory chips on the controller side of the uh, board. I've already tested it through all various tools to make the recovery easy and quick and unfortunately I came up with nothing. So uh, this is a chip off procedure. For those of you who are subscribed to this channel uh, should be pretty familiar with the process. Uh, but for those of you who are new to this channel or found this video because the card had failed and trying to find a solution, a chip off procedure is where uh, the content of the card, uh, aka the data, will be rebuilt and reconstructed from the for, from what is inside of the NAND chips. Uh, these two rectangular bigger shaped chips is where the data is stored. So in order to uh, get access to the data when the card doesn't respond through the interface, we take them off, read them separately, and then using the specialized data recovery software, uh, today it will be PC3000, we will be reconstructing the content uh, from binary form uh, into something that will be able to be viewed as a structure and uh, the files could be accessed. Uh, these memory chips do not have any uh, uh, managing mechanism within themselves. Everything is being ran on this type of device through the controller. So the controller organizes how everything is laid out between the two chips. These cards are very fast and in order to achieve that speed the controller has to break the data that it gets and record it simultaneously to both parties. Otherwise it will be lagging, otherwise there will be a bottleneck. But right now uh, that bottleneck is opened up fully because two uh, chips are receiving information at the same time. What that means is if you're recording a picture when you took a picture with this card, half of the picture is going to go to one chip, half of the picture is going to go to another chip. Uh, the chunks that it uses to record those tiny fragments are so small that uh, if one of those chips becomes problematic, the data is not going to be able to be retrieved from, from only one of the members. So today we'll uh, be taking them off, cleaning the chips, reading them, doing the error correction and the final step will be mix assembly which I will take you through entirely explain how these cards get built and how the data can be produced when it's totally dead and not responsive. First thing we need to keep in mind is their physical sequence. Uh, usually the sequence of the chips uh, corresponding to the controller is going to be marked on the printed circuit board. If we look on our printed circuit board here, we see that there are two memory chips, uh, one in this position and one in this position. And uh, the markings for them are U50 and uh, U51. So U50 is going to be our chip number one and U51 is going to be our chip number two. Step two is take them off and clean them, prepare them for the reading. Add some flux. So the temperature I set is 390 at uh, 90 air to remove. Once we see that the component starts to move like that, we can just pick it up and it's out and do the same thing for the chip number two. Then we take the VGA152 socket. So we have the orientation key on the chip and we have the orientation key on the socket. You can see that the, uh, the chip doesn't center itself perfectly because uh, the socket for VGA152 and 132, there's no difference in them pinout wise, but the frame 
and it has a slight gap. It's not that big of a deal to center it. You just gotta keep equal dis distance on both sides. Then we hook it up to PC3000 and open up the software. So since our first chip is already in the socket, I'm gonna go ahead and read ID for it. And it shows up as two parts and read chip, continue into, we're gonna read it into the dump file. Let's see what speed we get. We get six megabytes per second, which is pretty good. We're gonna spend about 45 minutes added to the transformation graph. All four parts are listed here. And the very first thing that we need to do is uh, perform error correction. And once it finds it, we can see the actual um, ranges. This is service area and uh, this is data area plus error correction code. Data area is going to be consisting of two parts, which are 512 each, and the remainder will go towards ECC. We're going to go ahead and select yes for execution. This is uh, relatively going to be quick because the components are small and it's running without having red blocks um, encountered along the way. So we're wrapping up on error correction. This is the last part. Uh, let's have a look at the map. If we go and build invalid sectors map, this is the portion that hasn't been read and it's 1.27 megabytes out of 4 gigs. Right now we're not going to pay attention to it. Uh, there's a possibility that we can improve that on the readout. Uh, but I wouldn't be um, overly concerned about um, uh, 1.2 megabytes of bad blocks just yet. Perform XOR analysis and uh, the XOR that it provides um, most likely is the right XOR. So we're gonna check that. The next thing we need to do is we need to line up these four parts in a specific order. That's, that order has a sequence. So if we go into service information there is the first one we see sm 2236pa ce0 from chip 1 will be linked with ce0 of every other chip on the device in order to group them together we need to move into the left segment and that switches places with one uh, service information step it up again and browse a few blocks down we see that um, RA is at the very top we can copy this LBA and just look at the hex view SM2236PA if we were to write something to this card what would happen is that the very first segment would be written to here by 8 bytes, then the next segment of 8 bytes will go here, then the next one and the next one and so on and so forth. We remember that 16 times 10098 goes for our data plus ECC. I'm gonna copy that and we're gonna split this disproportionately for this amount. That gives us two breaks. We're gonna split this um, also disproportionately because it's 18 and we have a leftover of 14 the 18 was the ending how do we know this if we uh, go back and go into ECC uh, sorry tools ECC view information about ECC it gives us our ranges page designer this uh, can be divided now proportionally I'm gonna divide it into 16 parts. Split it up again. Uh, disproportionately for 1024. 1024 is 512 times two. Cut that in half. Add these to the range. And we're gonna add this to the ending. This is our page description for now. Okay, so now that we've added the page transformation, uh, we can join the four parts joined by keywords element let's verify that the merging is done properly so we go into service area and we're just gonna locate one of the first blocks here and we have sm2236 para which is 
what the uh, beginning of this block should look like. Uh, we also have our ID for the chip and there are four of them here so they're all in the correct order how they're supposed to be 2C, 44, 3C. Four parts got merged into two parts. The block size had changed. We used to have 8192, now we have uh, 16384. We're gonna go into page designer again and uh, we will see that our page size increased. Again, we need to break it into the, the segments again so that the tool will know how to arrange them. Split it into 32. Ten, twenty-four, and these will be split proportionally and these will be split proportionally we're gonna add these to the range apply this to our transformation graph let's see what these parts look like and these parts actually look the same so we actually do not have an interleaf here and we can just join these by pages. So go ahead and add that to the graph because there is only two um, parts. That's what we uh, end up having. And if we look into service information, block length to the 32, we should have them um, go up sequentially. When they line up like that, we can actually complete our um, analysis. And uh, for this specific card, the best um, option to choose from is to go into the extensions and select uh, SMSDCF by block. Now we have um, our compact flash controller um, pre-designed here. Block size is good. And now we have assembled a uh, block number here. And we can see that this device has FAT32 partition on it if we look at to the structure we can see that it's got a DCIM folder and inside we see images and headers look quite all right so that's pretty much it for the process now it's just a matter of saving the data and um, informing the customer if you uh, lost important content on the uh, memory card and you need it uh, back uh, check the link in the description all of our contact information is there uh, for those of you who subscribe to this channel, thank you guys for joining once again. If you have any questions, as always, drop them in the comment section below and I'll be happy to answer all of you. Uh, for those of you who are new, subscribe, hit the notification button uh, to be notified when the next video drops. This channel is all about data recovery, so if you're interested in the topic, this is the place to be. Thanks again. See you next time.